What's interesting is at that particular stage in his life, there was literally no work that he could do no, no. that would make no. the promise be fulfilled. No, no, no. He's too old. Yeah. She's too old. Yeah. Biologically, that time has come and gone. gone. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to The Move, where we are vibing with the book 10 minutes at a time. 10 minutes. These 10 minutes are dedicated to Romans chapter 4. We're turning a new leaf. That's right. We're going to pick up the pace a tiny bit, yeah. verses 1 through 8. So the question is, have you read it? <laughs> it's like a game show. <laughs> I don't know if you guys get annoyed by that. I don't know if that us actually saying those lines helps you. You're like, oh yeah, I got to read it. Or, <laughs> or like you came knowing that you were supposed to read it and you're just like, all right, hurry up, skip past it. Let's put 10 minutes on the clock and let's get into it. Like, you know what I'm still know. curious about though? What's that? Whether or not they read it. <laughs> so go read it right now. Pause right here. While you're doing that, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe. Of course, drop a comment. Let us know what your day is going on. What did you eat for breakfast this morning? We just right. ate lunch yeah. here in the real world and uh, we had some Thai food, which was good. Mm -hmm. Drop a comment. Let us know what you ate. Huh? I don't know why, but I'd be interested in knowing. I would. Cool. Ten minutes on the clock. Let's go. Go. Romans chapter four. We're shifting, uh, not so much a shift, but really the meat of Paul's argument. He said a lot of stuff. And while you and I have discussed about some of the ways that the law and the prophets have actually only ever had one plan, that this is not plan B, but Jesus has always been plan A. Yes. Paul actually hasn't defended that idea up until this point. Yes. And we're going to see him turn his attention and really just try and say, okay, this is not anymore my idea, but let me show you. Yeah, and it's a certain pivot, but the pivot is only possible because of what he set up prior to. Correct. Because there has to be this continuity between the story of Israel and the story that Paul is now going to construct, beginning with Abraham, which is the father of the faith, right? Yeah. And what's necessary is that all that has come before ought to be working in the background precisely because the story he's going to tell, I think, to Paul, well, not I think, I know that to Paul, is the fulfillment of what Israel ought to have always been about. So then this question, if we go back to the beginning, to the father, Father Abraham, who had many sons, many sons, many sons had what? Father yes, Abraham. He did. The question about Father Abraham is, what then shall we say was gained by Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh? Mm. So that the audience knows he's referring to the work that Abraham did, quote unquote, the work that he did <laughs> when he himself was snipped. Yeah. Circumcision. Because if the Gentiles have access to the presence of God, if they can come boldly before the throne, if they too now can touch and, 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 and have access to this mercy seat and there is no veil like the glass between the dog, right? In, in the Look backyard. The you previous 10 that? minutes. Yeah, check it out. Then what did Abraham really gain by getting circumcised and the whole deal? He answers his own question. If Abraham was justified by works, then he has something to boast about, but not before God. He's touching on this belief here that the Jews had that Abraham actually was justified, not by any faith, but actually by the work of the law. Absolutely. Um, there's this tr tradition that teaches that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm -hmm. the big three, mm -hmm did not need to repent because they were righteous and did not sin. That's right. And multiple times in Jewish literature, you see this idea coming up over and over and over again, which is why they point to Abraham as this hero of the faith, as this person to emulate. They believe that, that none had reproduced the righteousness that Abraham had produced. And with all due respect to that position, that is one that isn't actually believed or ever entertained by Paul in the New Testament. Correct. Because while that might be a very cultured uh, uh, position, it is not one that Paul says actually belongs to the nation of Israel because he clearly sees that all have sinned and right. fallen short so that no work, even the snip snip, 
can include you into the righteousness that is required. Yeah, and, and th- this is why Paul's first example is Abraham. Mm-hmm. Because he's saying all this stuff in three. No one is righteous. Mm-hmm. No, not one. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. They're thinking, oh, really? Mm-hmm. What about Abraham? Well, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. And what's the right doing of God? It is his mercy, love manifested, but also his justice and condemnation on sin, right? Mm -hmm. So that this righteousness is actually accounted to Abraham. But what did Abraham do to have this accounted to him? Mm -hmm. He believed. Let's back up. What's the story here? What, What is he quoting in this passage, because oh, he's Paul. quoting a particular chapter. Oh, yes, yes, yes. If we go back to Genesis, right? And 26. And, and, and we start with Genesis even all the way 12, the oh, call of the Abraham, beginning. right? Okay. You go to the beginning, and Abraham actually hears this call when he's living in Mesopotamia amongst his uh, family, and he, heals the, he hears the call of God, and uh, Abraham comes out, hey, I'm going to show you this land, come out. And Abraham believed from then. Yeah, right? at but the very then, beginning, at willing the beginning. to, what is uh, Hebrews 11 says, he's willing to go even though he doesn't know where he's going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, God's like, Abraham, pick up your stuff, go. go. He's like, all right, cool, just tell me where. Don't worry about it, just go. Go, go. Uh, and okay. And he goes. Does it. Right? And then the summary in Genesis 26 about that, hey, Abraham believed mm-hmm. and it was counted to him as righteousness, but when did he believe? All the way back at the beginning. Yeah. Right? And then circumcision, the work was just uh, uh, what followed after was the natural byproduct of that belief. He got, this is a symbol of the promise that God had given to him, right? Mm -hmm. And it was a symbol that was put in a very specific place on his body in order for him to remember that even though everything on him was aging, that if that symbol was still there, life would come out. (laughs) <laughs> Y'all get what I'm saying? Y'all get what I'm saying? Life would come out and God would accomplish his promise through his literal seed. What's interesting is at that particular stage in his life, there was literally no work that he could do no, no. that would make no. the promise be fulfilled. No, no, no. He's too old. Yeah. She's too old. Yeah. Biologically, that time is come and gone. gone. There's no work that could possibly ever help him reach the standard. Yeah, and so all he has left is to believe that what God said Have you Have you ever been there? To to all you have left is to believe? Yeah. Oh, man, that's a tough question because I feel that I live in a world where I have so many options where I can use a number of things. You know where I have been Hmm. is when, sadly enough, in two places, one, I couldn't overcome my own brokenness. Yeah. To overcome, like, for me, I'll, I'll I'll name it. For me, it was uh, lust. Yeah. And not only lust in the traditional sort of screened way on the interwebs, but lust in the outflow of my life. And I got to this point where I just couldn't couldn't overcome it as hard as I try. I was traveling, preaching gospel, and it just wasn't happening for me. Mm -mm. At least I thought I was preaching gospel until I actually heard somebody preach the gospel. And they preached what you and I have been covering for the last however many sessions. And somebody said, listen, Jesus Christ crucified is not only enough, but he was crucified knowing exactly who and what you are. Mm -hmm. And he loved you anyway. That's why God gave him to us. And I heard the gospel and man, it shifted something within. Mm. And here was the deal that there was nothing I could do in and with my body that could actually give me God's mercy and righteousness. There's this thing that we have talked about in the past where C.S. Lewis talks about God's humility, uh, his stooping to save, where he's willing to let us come to that point where we finally realize He's the, not only the, the last option, but the only one because yeah. we've, we've tried everything else and have come up short. Yeah. And so I was there actually, now that you asked the question, yes. Yeah, you it was were. was a very real time where all I had left was I just had to believe what I was being given and that belief transformed me. And yeah. ultimately it actually transformed me so that when I read something like this, I know this experience. So verse seven 
that David testifies. This is Psalm 32. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. Yeah. There's two things that uh, Paul is highlighting in this text where one, righteousness that did not exist is counted towards Abraham. Yeah. And sin that was present is not counted against, against Abraham. David. And so a, 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 a righteousness that Abraham doesn't have within himself, because I would, for the sake of clarity, it always existed. It just wasn't revealed. Okay. And it existed in the person. There's there's some overtones oh, here as we get to later chapters that we'll, we'll dive into this yeah. subject a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah, so that then Abraham, he believed this thing. He believed it so wholeheartedly that God saw him and said, yeah, you find agreement with me yeah. and your heart is towards me. Now, you're going to do some things, Abraham, and, you know, stumble and misstep, but your heart is towards me. Yeah. And that, you agreeing with who I am and who I am according to my life in you, I'm counting that as righteousness. And that's, that's such a gift. That's the phrase that's repeated over and over in this passage, counted as righteousness. Yeah. Read the chapter again. Yeah. You'll see it many times. Yeah. We'll see you <laughs> on the move in the next 10. Comment, subscribe, thumbs up. See you soon. Peace.